Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church's Wednesday feature, Oh, the Places God Goes. We're examining the places that God can be found in our community and around the world. And it turns out that God can be found everywhere. There isn't a place that we go that we don't find God. Today, I'm standing outside the Fargo City Hall. It's a reminder that God can even be found in places of government, in our halls of justice, and in our prison systems. God is there with all of these people who are deliberating and discerning what the law is all about. Now, I want to make a distinction between God's law and our human law. Right? God is present in both of those things. God is present in our human law and God is present in our divine law. But it's important to note that our laws are made by people. And as people, we are flawed, sinful beings. And so the laws that we make to govern ourselves sometimes can be harmful and unjust. And yet, even in these times, God steps in to comfort those who are harmed by the laws that are present in our society. Right? God's law can really be boiled down to love God and love your neighbor. Now, in the Old Testament, Moses uh, f- got a whole bunch of laws from God, and uh, those were used to establish the Israelites' relationship with one another and with God. And there was a whole list of them. It goes on for books and books of the Bible, law after law after law after law after rule after statute after ordinance, a big list of laws for people to follow. There are so many laws uh, that are there and established that it's, um, it seems like a, a, an impossible task for any one person to be able to, not, to obey or fulfill them, uh, much less just remember all of those laws. In 2006, an author named A.J. Jacobs undertook the Herculean task of attempting to follow all of the laws that are spelled out in the Bible. Uh, He took one year of his life, tried to follow all of those laws, and wrote a book about it. And that book is called The Year of Living Biblically, One Man's Humble Quest to Follow the Bible as Literally as Possible. Now, if you've uh, reached the end of your summer reading list and are looking for something for the school year and you don't mind uh, reading something that uh, goes into the realm of the irreverent every once in a while, then I recommend this book to you. It reads pretty quickly, and uh, it includes quite a few humorous stories. The author, A.J. Jacobs, not only obeys the famous laws, right, like the Ten Commandments and loving your neighbor, but he observes all of the minute rules, like not wearing clothes of mixed fibers, not shaving his beard, and even stoning adulterers. He actually felt that kept a handful of pebbles in his pocket so that he could fling them at an adulterer if he ever came across one. He said that the most difficult laws to follow were the ones that required the most consistent thought. So, for example, uh, not uttering the name of another god. And our English language is filled uh, with the names of pagan gods, including uh, the days of the week. For example, Thursday is actually named after the Norse god of thunder, Thor. Thor's day, Thursday. So he couldn't say some of the days of the week. Or another tricky rule is that you shall stand in the presence of your elders. And so he said that he was having dinner in a Florida restaurant at 5 p.m., which is about the highest concentration of elderly people in the world, and he had to get up from his seat every time a white-haired person entered the restaurant. So for the entire meal, he was bouncing up and down like a pogo stick. Now, as the book describes, some of the laws that are spelled out in the Bible verge on the ridiculous and the impossible to uphold. But what's more... He talks about that toward the end of the year, his quest for living biblically has consumed so much of his life that it stopped being about God 
and it became all about him. It became about following rules, obeying the law, and it didn't really have anything to do with God anymore at all. Jesus, coming along long after Moses, saw the same thing in the society around him. The Pharisees and the scribes were all about the law and following the law to the letter of the law. And Jesus saw them and said, why are you following the law um, so emptily? You've forgotten why the law is there in the first place. And he said, the law can be summed up like this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your strength, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. If we guide our lives with those principles in mind, loving God and loving our neighbor, then no matter what we do, we will be obeying the law, God's law. So as we go forth today, let us consider how God is present in our laws, how God is present in our justice system, how God is present with those who have broken the law. And ask ourselves, are we loving God and are we loving our neighbor? And if we're doing those things, then God indeed goes with us. Oh, the places God goes.